Hey there, everybody. Swole the Beast here, coming at you with part two of our 2024 Black Desert Online tutorial for new players. Uh, if you have not checked out part one, I suggest you do that. It covers a lot of the things you sort of want to know before getting started. Uh, would suggest that if you don't want to check out that guide, feel free to stay here. This is going to get us right into what you need to do to start up the game. First things first, make sure we check the settings. Make sure your display resolution is where it needs to be and full screen window if you play with multiple monitors. So we're going to hit start. The game suggests that we start our adventure on the seasonal server and I could not agree more. Uh, we're going to do that. Let me go over a little bit of what a seasonal server or a seasonal experience offers that'll help a new player as opposed to a non-seasonal experience. The most important reason you want to start on season when you start playing Black Desert Online is that it gives you a gear jumpstart to enable you to start to experience low grade end game grind spots at a much earlier pace than if you had gone non-seasonal. Uh, there's four major types of gear in this game. This one will get you to the second gear type really quickly so that you can pick up and play most of the content the game has to offer as soon as you're done with your seasonal experience. Uh, secondly, seasonal servers you, you'll have access to as a seasonal character, which do give experience bonuses, life skill bonuses, that will uh, help you progress your account a little bit faster than if you didn't have access to seasonal. Sometimes these bonuses can be overwritten by an event going on in the game. Uh, right now, that is not the case, so seasonal will benefit you in leveling a little bit faster. Additionally, on a seasonal server, PvP is turned off. Uh, with PvP being turned off, it allows you to, on your first character, uh, experience the game a little bit without having to deal with getting ganked or, or murked uh, by other players until you choose to move off of the seasonal servers. So let's talk about this screen first. There's standard characters, there's trial characters, there's seasonal character, and uh, then there's these also seasonal character tickets down here that we're going to talk about briefly. You can create two seasonal characters in a brand new fresh account. It'll have two tickets. That being said, you cannot have two seasonal characters at the same time. You're only allowed to have one seasonal character at a time. So you want to be a little careful in how you select which character you're going to play. And that's what I'm going to get into next, which is known as the trial tab. The trial tab allows you to create characters and play with them in the game at level 60 for free. And you can create and delete as many trial characters as you want in order to decide which class you want to play without having to create and delete seasonal characters all the time. So we're going to look at this right now. You want to create a new character? Yes. Here are all the classes, and this is where a lot of people get, the first place that people get overwhelmed. There is now, I believe, 27 classes with Scholar having come out. And it's worth noting that for the vast majority of classes, there is a main hand way to play it, and an awakening, uh, awakening way to play the class. So, if you're a warrior, you start with a sword and a shield, but... When you get to Awakened, you have a two-handed sword. Uh, completely changes all of your combat abilities. It is essentially a new class that you don't unlock until level 56. So when somebody says uh, Succession, what they mean is main hand weapon and uh, offhand weapon. When they say Awakened, you're using your Awakened weapon. Uh, so many of the classes, or the majority of the classes, have two ways to play, Main and Awakened. And you can click and see what each one looks like. Classes are gender locked. If you're a Sage, you're always going to be a male. If you're a Striker, you're always going to be a male. If you're a Tamer, you're always going to be a female. 
that's the way it works in Black Desert. Uh, I actually kind of like the system. You get used to it. Uh, but it makes identification of what class you're either going up against or you see in the game a lot easier because they always look similar. So, uh, for starting out, what class should you play? is a very, very common question. I would recommend about four to five different classes that are what we consider low APM, or actions per minute. Uh, a low number of button presses per minute, so it's a little bit more casual to play, a little easier to learn to get started with the game. Though, uh, I will say that despite the recommendations that I'm about to make in certain classes, Pick what you think is cool. Pick what you're going to enjoy learning. Uh, people are willing to take on a steeper learning curve if they think the class lore or the class looks a way that they want to play. So absolutely pick what you want. Uh, many MMOs have metas, uh, classes that are far and above better than other classes. That is not the case with Black Desert Online. Out of the 27 classes, I would say 25 of them are in a very good spot. 22 of them could use a little bit of a, of a touch-up, but we're, we're in a good spot as a game. And even those that need a touch-up aren't that far behind. You can do everything content-wise in the game with any of the classes. Black Desert excels at that compared to other games that I've played. So the classes that I would recommend out the gate for a new player are as such. There's going to be Witch and Wizard, our ranged casters that are quite low APM, easy to play, and use more of a priority list as opposed to a set set of combos. So a Witch is what I main, a Wizard it's very similar to a witch, especially during the leveling process. They're almost identical skill-wise. They separate post-level 56 in what they specialize in. But uh, very fun classes, depending on if you want to play as a guy or a girl. I would also recommend a lawn. A lawn uh, succession, which is the, the class you're going to start as and level as. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's ability to to run and jump and run on air, sort of like a Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, is a ton of fun. Helps you with a ton of uh, challenges in the game that are timed, uh, getting from place to place, lots of mobility, lots of fun. So I would definitely recommend that. The next class that I would recommend is Guardian. Guardian is on everybody's list for low APM in the game. It is a very straightforward class Pretty easy to play. Both Succession and Awakened are pretty easy to play. I think Awakened gets a little bit easier once you're post level 56, but in the meantime, it's a very enjoyable class. Very low actions per minute, very low stress, uh, easy to learn. So I would re definitely recommend Guardian. And the last that I will recommend, though I'll put a caveat on this recommendation, is Berserker. Berserker is, Succession Berserker is very low actions per minute, very easy to play. I actually think it is too easy to play. I found it extremely boring. It's also one of the more overpowered classes at the moment. If that appeals to you, by all means, go with Berserker. Uh, I don't think the look of it is very fun for me. And like I said, I found it to be a little too... Spin to win, a little too boring compared to the other classes that I just recommended. So for this guide, I'm going to go Guardian. Guardian is one of the easiest classes to play at the character selection screen. There's a lot to pick from. Uh, there's horoscope, weather, customizations, and then character action. Customizations lets you do hair, body, face, voice. Uh, character actions let you pose them in different clothes and different out and different with stances so that you can decide if you like what you've done to your customizations. Weather is similar; it changes the the lighting so you can see it in different lights. Uh, not not too big of a deal. And then horoscope lets you pick your character's horoscope, just like if you were playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, 
Horoscope has no impact on gameplay. Pick whatever symbol you think is cool. If you think an owl is cool, pick an owl. It does not matter. A couple of quests will ask you for how many stars are in your horoscope. Uh, like an owl has four. Uh, you'll be able to tell this inside the game. You'll be able to Google it. It's not a big deal. Other than that, it has no impact on gameplay. Now, customization. There is a thousand things that you can pick. Personally, I always do muscle sliders up because I am sold a beast. So we get as muscular as possible. But other than muscle sliders up, I don't like customizing characters. I think it takes too long and it's not my favorite activity in the world. For me, there is this beauty album on the bottom left. I love this because it lets other people create pre-made loadouts for customizations. I come in here, I find one that I like, I can touch it up just slightly, and we can move on with our lives. So we're gonna try this number five, see if we like it. Uh, looks pretty good to me. The only thing I'm going to touch is body, muscle, and we're going to make her very strong. So there we go, we have our Guardian, she's strong, she's ready to kick some ass. I'm going to name her Protein Bar 3. And we're going to move on with our lives. Notice it says down here, family name, adventurer with a bunch of random characters, and character name. In most MMOs, your experience will largely be based off the names of your characters. In Black Desert Online, it will not. Family name will be much, much, much more important than character name. Name your character whatever you'd like. It's fine. It does not matter. When you get in game, we will be setting our family name. And that is when you want to be careful in what you pick, because that is what other players in the game will know you as. Regardless of what character you are on, your family name stays the same. If you join a guild on one character, you've joined a guild on all of your characters. You can't swap characters and have people not know that you're online. It is one account, one family. So we're going to create our berserk or our guardian. But notice the season ticket. It shows a check mark on one of them. One of them is being utilized. One of them is still available for me. Again, I cannot create another seasonal character right now. If I click it, it's grayed out. Until this one is complete with the season journey and graduates, which takes us all the way to level 60 and has a lot of uh, checkpoints along the way to make sure we've experienced a lot of the content the game has to offer, we will not be able to create another seasonal character. So we're going to our character we're going to enter the world there's going to be a couple settings that pop up screen shaking it says recommended 50 percent i would recommend you take this down to at least low if not off it's not a very fun effect in my opinion uh take that down motion blur same thing keep it low navigation i prefer arrow i like the game on remastered but if your computer cannot handle that or you think it is too dark and gloomy, uh, try it on high or very high. But here you can select high. I'm going to keep it on remastered. And low power option, I'm going to turn off, uh, which will help me experience a better frame rate. We are now entering the game for the first time. As we enter for the first time, we do not have an option. It will run the tutorial notice the year is 276 this is the brand new tutorial that was released two days ago uh it is january 26 so two days ago the tutorial update went live and this is a much improved tutorial over the previous version i cannot stress enough that i really do appreciate what they've done with the tutorial in this game uh, we are in the Black Desert or the Valencia Desert. So I am going to now 
talk a little bit about the tutorial, but I'm not going to run through it step by step. I believe you are more than capable of going through a tutorial all by yourself. So notice it gives you an overview of your button presses. In a little while, it'll give you an overview of some combos, how combos work. Uh, it'll show you how your movement abilities work. And uh, pay attention. It is very good information. We will go over it again in the future if you don't pick it up the first time. But this is a vastly improved new player experience. I very much appreciate Pearl Abyss coming forward and putting in the work into this tutorial. Uh, I actually played through it the first time with a number of guildies on voice chat. We were all extremely impressed by it. So good job, the Pearl Abyss, making the new player experience better, more interactive, and more relevant to the game that we're about to play. So I'll let you get to it. We'll pick this up again. Uh, at the end of the tutorial, it'll make you pick your starting zone. Pick Ancient Stone Chamber. So here we are. Tutorial is now complete. Again, great job from Pearl Abyss. Much better tutorial. Um, it covers things like autopathing. It covers things like uh, combos. I think it's a it's a, a huge step in the right direction as well as storytelling. Uh, it it makes a lot more sense than the old tutorial. If you've never played the old tutorial, trust me, what you just witnessed was a much improved version of it. Uh, now, Ancient Stone Chamber. We are going to select. Notice that both Mountain of Eternal Winter and Land of Morning Light say for advanced adventurers or veteran adventurers. Uh, I do not recommend either of these for a brand new player for multitude of reasons. Uh, the first of which is that Land of Morning Light takes place on an island far away from the mainland. You won't experience the majority of the content of the mainland if you click this thing. And you'll be stuck there for six to eight hours. There's very little combat, which is the most fun part of BDO. Mountain of Eternal Winter is a pretty good starting area, but again, you'll only level up 1 to 56 in your starting area, which is the Mountain of Eternal Winter expansion, and you won't have exposure to 3 to 5 cities that you get exposure to if you pick Ancient Stone Chamber. So I would absolutely pick Ancient Stone Chamber. It's the hub of what makes Black Desert buzz. It's the four cities that most players are in at any given time. Most of the events that happen in the game happen in these four cities. You don't want to be stuck up on an island or down in the, in the mountain of, uh, with snow when there's events happening in Ancient Stone Chamber. So let's click that. It'll zone us in, and it'll start the story. Uh, there is a little pop-in in this game. You'll notice with some of the graphics that happens throughout the game, we can adjust the settings to make that a little less prevalent, but we're going to see it as you play Black Desert. You get used to it. It doesn't bother you as much in the future. The first thing we're going to talk about is the UI or the HUD. You notice your Black Spirit talks to you. You can hit R a couple times, get through that. Hit R a couple more times, and we'll get a, a manual. So we open our Black Spirit again. We can get a manual. Black Spirit is your comma button. Uh, I actually have my comma button bound to my mouse, as long as as well as my control button, which gives you your mouse at any given time. So I have those on my mouse so that I don't have to use my pinky or my pointer finger to hit comma or control. But those are the only two mouse binds that I use in this game. I don't use any macros. I wouldn't recommend it. They do ban people for using macros all the time. Uh, but yes, just simple key binds are okay. I do them through Razor Synapse, which is a, an authorized program. All of my macros on my computer are things that are outside of the game, uh, such as uh, opening garmoth.com have macroed uh things like that the next thing we're going to talk about are things happening on our screen right now first of all we cannot edit the ui until we are level 10 so we're not going to try secondly we see the season pass glowing in the top right we click on it it shows us all the objectives we have on our season journey in order for us to graduate the last of which is level 60 defeat 500 monsters and speak to fugar Fugars in every major city. 
So we're going to work our way down this throughout the, the guide that I'm making here. The other things that we're going to touch on are the Black Spirits Adventure. It's the bouncing dice in your bottom right of your screen. Uh, just acquire the dice. You can roll them if you want. Actually, we're going to do that now to show you how things work. So when you roll dice in Black Spirits Adventure, you get items. Don't be afraid to get these items because they do not go straight to your inventory and clutter up your inventory. Everything you get from this dice game actually is useful in some way. So don't be afraid to play the game. It's not a waste of time. You'll get something that you'll probably use. Uh, like I just got a gold bar, so some silver, uh, nothing too big. The next two things we're going to talk about is the challenges tab and the Black Spirit safe. So notice I, I just want a gold bar from the Black Spirit's adventure. It goes into the Black Spirit safe. Black Spirit safe can hold an infinite number of items and you can pull it out on any character at any time. Think of it like infinite storage for things that you acquire through Black Spirit's adventure and daily logins. So I'm gonna leave this here rather than clutter up my inventory at the moment and let this sit. Uh, the also daily, you do acquire silver for certain things that you do in the game and family fame. So we're gonna let that uh, we're gonna let that accrue uh, as we play the game. The next thing we're gonna talk about is your challenges tab. Your challenges tab is where you get items uh, as you complete certain challenges in the games. There are certain items that you're going to get out the gate that uh, are useful to grab, and there are certain things that are useful to let sit here. For instance, this dream horse, every account New to Black Desert now gets a Dream Horse, a Tier 9 horse. It is a very good horse. You have to choose between three different horses. We're going to go over that in a second. So in order to show you all of that, I am going to claim this horse uh, for now. Daily Focus Time lets you pick a scroll that gives you either Mercenary's Experience or Mercenary's Life Experience. Uh, I would recommend as a new player to always pick the Mercenary's Experience. If you do not collect this challenge every day, it resets. It doesn't add on. So it's worth grabbing every day. Notice you can read in the tooltips. Tooltips in this game are extremely important. You can read in the tooltip that a mercenary's experience scroll gives 200% combat experience, 30% skill experience, but can be multiplied by three to 690% if you have three of them. So rather than use the scroll, I would recommend grabbing it every day, saving them up for when you're going to grind for an hour straight on killing monsters or experience. So I'd recommend grabbing this one. Uh, the uh, Dreamy Crystal of Balance is something that we're going to use later on in the game after we finish season. So for this, I would leave it here in the challenge tab. Additionally, notice this next challenge is... Contribution experience and some gear that all has little uh, circle X or circle with a line through it symbols showing we can't use this gear yet. Because we can't use this gear, I'm going to let it sit here. This will be useful for us, but we're going to want to be able to pick what we want based off other things that happen down the road. So let this sit here for now. Uh, we're going to claim loyalties. This is a life skill tool that expires in a couple of days. This is from an event that's happening. We're not too worried about it. And then on collection scrolls, notice it has a P in the top left. This P means that it is a pearl item. Pearl items go to a separate part of our inventory, the pearl tab, and do have 192 slots and no weight associated with them. So feel free to grab all pearl items and have them sit in your pearl inventory. Now that we've talked to our Black Spirit, we've gotten our Eden's Adventure Journal, and we've also got all everything associated with the horse. The next thing we're going to do is get rid of Eden's Adventure Journal. And the reason we're going to do that is I want you to right-click Eden's Adventure Journal. Notice it loads the website, which now has a warning associated with it, which is weird, but uh, and a CAPTCHA, which is also weird. 
spot it loads in-game guides for newer players these are extremely useful uh, especially if you're going to do crafting crafting notes is extremely useful the reason we're going to destroy Eden's adventures is because if you hit F1 on your keyboard, you can do all of the same thing. This, here's all the events, here's all the adventures guides, here's the Oasis of Knowledge. If we go home, that is exactly where we just were. So, rather than have a piece of an item in your inventory that does nothing for us, because the F1 button does it, we're going to destroy this. Now, let's talk Dream Horse. Your T9 Dream Horse, you have six options when selecting a horse. First things first, do not pick female. Pick a male horse. Male horses are much more rare, and you will need a male and a female Dream Horse to make a tier 10 horse much, much later in the game. So. I think everybody would recommend do not pick a female horse, pick a male horse. The next option is do you pick a Doom, a Danae, or a Dine, depending on who you ask, or an Arduent, or a Pegasus? So a Doom, a Danae, or a Pegasus are the three options we're going to discuss. Um, I'm going to bring up a Grumpy G guide to help us decide which one we think is best for a new player. There's a couple things to consider here. A Doom is a force that looks like it's on fire. It is the best for offensive and PvP and combat. It is a two-seater, and it has the slowest AFK travel time because it has the slowest overall speed. Arduent has the fastest overall speed and can also glide down from high altitudes. So if you jump off of a cliff, you can take no fall damage when you glide down. Uh, useful for cutting corners or cutting or, or through mountains. And a Dine or a Danae has fast uh, desert travel, which is very useful when you get to the regions of Valencia and the Black Desert. Has the best defense and has a hit point and a mana point heal for the party. Now, I'll be honest. The skills that they get aren't very useful. Besides the Arduent fall damage skill. So I wouldn't consider those. You're not going to be doing PvP out the gate. You're not going to be healing your parties very often. Because again, you're not going to be doing PvP out the gate. If you're playing with a friend. I can't stress enough that this two-seater skill is actually very useful. Essentially, you get on your horse. Your friend gets on your horse. You ride somewhere together. Uh, it is pretty useful. I think it is very convenient. Now, this says the best AFK travel is the Arduent or the Pegasus. I disagree with this assessment. The Pegasus has 122% turn and break, which makes it very hard or very poor at following the given path when you auto path, which is AFK travel. So while it may have the highest speed, it also has the worst turning, meaning it gets stuck on things constantly while AFK traveling. The Doom, on the other hand, has pretty high or decent speed and the highest braking and turning. If you are going to AFK travel, I actually recommend a Doom over a, a Pegasus because this one will get there while you're AFK. This one will get stuck on something a minute into your AFK. The other option is the Dene or the Dined, which has mediocre speed, faster than a Doom, slower than a, than a Pegasus, also has mediocre braking turning, slower or worse than a Doom, better than a Pegasus. Personally, I love my Dined. I think it is a great horse. It gets me everywhere I need to go, and it is, it is amazing. When I first started out in this game, I picked the Doom for the two-seater option. I was not disappointed. Uh, the less than a minute difference in AFK travel because of speed is not a deal breaker for me. So I would recommend if you're playing with a friend, Doom is unequivocally the best option. If you're playing by yourself, I prefer Dine, but 
Also, a Doom is a fire horse. We can't overlook the fact that it just looks the coolest out of all three. So, for this playthrough that you're going to watch in the guide, I'm going to pick a Doom. In that, you right click, you pick Dream Doom Male. Remember, we're picking a male. And then you have to type Doom in order to get the item. There we go. We now have our horse emblem. This we cannot use until we get to a stable. We will get to a stable in a little while once we've progressed a little further into the main story. So this gets us started. Now we are going to press through the main story quest for a little while. Uh, and I'll talk to you again shortly.